Hola, hola! Thanks for being here for Adobe Max. I'm Karina Anglada, and I am so excited to walk through today's topic, social media secrets from idea to upload. This session is relatively short, but my hope is to keep things practical, easy to follow, and most importantly, useful for you and some of your social video workflows. So get cozy and let's dive right in. I want to edit a vertical video for some of my social media platforms. And to begin, we're going to work with our Premiere Pro project that we've called Max Online Session. Now I have these social media specific sequences because this is actually a project template from Premiere Pro that gives me all sorts of sequences with these awesome overlays that shows the content and the graphics that are relevant to each specific platform. Now, what's great is I can toggle these on or off, and they also come with really cool captions. So this Instagram Reels sequence has these bold captions as an option, or there's these subtle options subtle option for captions as well. Now for today, I'm going to focus on this TikTok vertical nine by 16 sequence here. And if you've never used project templates before, you can actually save your own and create folders, bins, add graphics, stock footage, whatever you'd like. Um, but this one is uh, social media templates. So definitely check those out if you get a chance. Now, for now, with these captions, we're just going to lock them so they don't move. And we're also going to lock this overlay so we can work with our content. Now, I'm going to import my media. And the video that I'm working with is really a video of me just rambling on creative reflections. Now, what I could do is just drag this. See, there's a on V1. I can replace this layer with my content here. And now I can see where my video lines up with some of the graphics that are specific to TikTok. Now, if I click the text panel and click transcript, you'll notice that this line is moving and it's actually showing me that my video is being transcribed automatically. Now, this is because I have in my preferences or settings under media analysis and transcription, this is checked where I automatically transcribe clips. So for those of you working with lots of dialogue, that's a great way to transcribe your media. You can also just right click your, your clip and click transcribe. In my case, it says retranscribe because Look, it finished the transcription here. Now, what's awesome about this text panel and the transcription is we can search for specific words. So here I can see I said the word creativity eight different times throughout this, you know, three or some minute video. And we can also look at the transcript view options. So in the bottom right corner of the text panel, there's these transcript view options where I can change the view so I can show speakers. In my case, it's just me, speaker one, and I can show pauses and I can change the minimum pause link. So you'll notice that the transcript is changing with the pause link that I'm changing. Now for social media, I want something really fast and snappy. So I'm gonna keep my minimum pause length at 0.10 seconds. And I can even enable the transcript to show things like filler words like um or uh. Now I'll click save. And when I hover over these ellipses, it shows me how long each of these pauses is. So this is a great way for me to get a sense of the timing of my edit. But one of the things that I want to challenge us to do here today is to edit this sequence without actually playing back any of the audio. And we're going to do that by using this text panel and something called text-based editing. Now I'm gonna toggle off my pauses here. I don't wanna look at them because I wanna focus on the text first and foremost. Now text-based editing works like a word processing document where you can basically select your text. And let's say in this example here, 
I don't want this, so I want to cut it from my sequence. What I can do is highlight that like I just did, and if you zoom in on the timeline, notice it marked an in and out based on my selection. So if I selected even further, it would make that adjustment, but I just want to delete this first part here because I was kind of rambling. Now I can extract this or the shortcut for it, which is an apostrophe, and watch the timeline that gets cut from my timeline. So you can use commands like cut, copy, paste with text-based editing. Now I'm going to, it looks like I repeated myself here. Welcome to episode one. I'm going to delete that and hit extract. And I'm just going to scrub through and again, just kind of read through and see where I want to delete some of this content because I want to make things a little bit tighter. So I'm going to delete this here. Here I talk about how creativity is supposed to be fun, but it's actually pretty hard. And let's see, I will delete this sentence and I'm going to scroll down even further. I say inspiration comes from everywhere. And let's just delete this and say, maybe it's from watching your favorite TV show. All right, so I've cut several sound bites out of this. And now I can see my sequence, it's two and a half minutes. So I've cut a significant amount of time out of my edit. But I want to take this a step further before we play back any audio because I actually want to batch delete the pauses. So I'm going to show those pauses again. And next to the search bar, there's a funnel where I can identify the pauses. And here it shows me I had 22 pauses that are, again, with that minimum pause length. So I'm gonna click delete, hit extract, delete all my pauses, and watch my timeline. It shortened all of my edit here and got rid of those pauses. Now I could repeat that process and choose filler words. It looks like I didn't say um, which is crazy. That never happens. But if I wanted to, and if I had some filler words, I could also batch delete every time I said um or uh, if I had those in there. So from here, we're going to clean up this edit. It looks like this part here is just me sitting down and fixing my hair. So we'll delete that from the timeline and then trim, trim this uh, section here. We're just going to, you know, cut this here um, and get rid of that little front end and let's take a listen and see how I did with our rough cut with text-based editing. Welcome to episode one of my reflections on creativity. Let's get into it. Number one, the first thing I've learned throughout my creativity journey is that messing up is part of the process. There have been... So this is not bad at all. Now, one of the things that I could do, because I only have one angle of this interview or of this video, is I'm actually going to give myself two angles, and then I'm also going to add some keyframes to emphasize certain moments. So in my timeline here, I'm going to select and hold down shift for every other clip here. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to select every other clip. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to give myself and make it look like I have multiple angles. So in the properties panel, because I have every other selected, I'm just going to scale in ever so slightly. And now if I zoom, it looks like I have two angles and I only had one. So this is the beauty of working with the properties panel. I can scale, I can crop, I can do all sorts of things, reposition really, really nicely. But let's say with this, uh, and actually let me undo that there. I didn't mean to move that. Let's say for this part here, it's I'm saying the first thing I've learned is that messing up is part of the process. Now, maybe I want to add a slow zoom in here. Now, what I'm going to do is with this clip selected, I am going to make a keyframe under scale. So hit this little diamond and that adds a keyframe. Now, if I click these three dots and show open advanced effect controls, you can move this keyframe that you just made. But I'm going to move my cursor forward a little bit and we're going to scale in even more, right? We're going to be really dramatic and we're going to 
move these keyframes now. So now for this section, we've added a slow scaled zoom in to emphasize what I'm saying. The first thing I've learned throughout my creativity journey is that messing up is part of the process. There have been so So that's a great way that you can add keyframes to add specific moments. Now you can do that a really fast scale in if there's something really specific or you want a moment to pop, but that's how you quickly add keyframes. But let's take this a step further because now that we've built our general rough cut, I also want to add captions. So under the text panel, I'll click captions. And from here, I can create captions from transcript. Now it gives me several options to work with. I see those track styles that we saw before, the caption styles. So I'll click the bold ones because I think that will work better with my content. And I'm gonna bring my maximum length and characters pretty low because I want the words to come on pretty fast. And we're going to set our minimum duration to about 2.3. And we want single lines for captions. So I'll create captions and look at that. I've got captions done, ready for me to work with. And oh, by the way, if I unlock this overlay, we can now see where the captions fit with my content and everything else on these graphics. Now, let's say I want to make adjustments to these bold captions. I can lasso captions on captions track three, go to properties, and here I can change things like the background. So maybe I want it to be more of a vibrant blue and I want the fill to be something like a white, right? And I can also make adjustments uh, to the placement of these captions. Now, here at the beginning, I kind of have a section where I, you know, want to put it above me. So even though the captions are here, I can move these and just select them and change the zone and move them down. So now we've got this whole part where it looks like it meant to be there, right? Now I'm looking at this video and I realized I made a mistake, but we can fix it. So I wanna say it says, welcome to episode one of my reflections on creativity. Now I want reflections to be on the left, to read like left to right. So what I can do, and this can be a secret between us and nobody else, nobody else has to know. No one has to know I'm chronically online. I'm gonna select my video layer and I'm actually gonna go to effects and we're gonna look for the flip effect and add a horizontal flip and nobody has to know. Now it looks like I have reflections on one side and creativity there. Now here's where we can be creative with the properties panel. Again, maybe I want it to look like the text is floating above. Maybe I want this on to be in the center and I want creativity on the side here and I can make those adjustments. So again, it looks like it's all part of the process, right? Reflections on creativity. And maybe we can move on up so it looks uh, a little more in alignment with, um, with reflections on creativity. Now, this is the a really quick and fast way to add captions. And of course, if we had more time, we can make even more adjustments and tweak it to our creative intent. But let's just say we're finished and we're ready to export this video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark an in and out on my timeline here, and we are going to export this video. Now, before I do that, I want to toggle off the overlay because I don't want that to export with these graphics that say this will be cut off, right? We don't want to do that. So we'll just toggle those off by hitting the eyeball and they're gone. And now we'll go to the export panel. And from here, I have the option to set my file name. We'll call this TikTok video max, and I can set my location. And here I have presets of some of my favorite export settings. Um, 
A lot of times for social media, I'll lean on H.264 files. Um, I also choose match source adaptive high bitrate with an H.264 format. It's really common and it's a nice smaller size for social media. If you want something really nice and crispy, depending on what you're publishing, you can also choose a higher um, a file higher file size by selecting a QuickTime, something like Apple ProRes 422HQ. And with your video settings, you can also select more and select render at maximum depth and use maximum render quality. And that will help give you um, some, some nice outputs. But again, those might be a little bit hefty. So normally I like to go to my presets and choose things like match the source and H.264. Um, or if you're new to exporting, you can also click the three dots next to presets and click more. And you can even search for specific presets. And maybe if you're publishing to a platform like Facebook, you could then favorite your preset. And then it will always be there at your disposal when you're ready to export. So for now, we'll just uh, set our um, match source high adaptive bit rate. And the other option that I can do is I can direct upload to TikTok straight from this export panel. I can, I'm already signed in, so I can choose the type of post or a draft. I can add my caption. So here are my creative thoughts dot, dot, dot. And I can also even select a frame, right? So maybe I want to choose a specific frame, uh, you know, to capture attention. Um, maybe it's this one here, uh, where I look crazy, um, right. To, to, capture the attention. And from here, right. Once I decide on what frame I want, um, I can choose that as my current frame and that will be my cover image to save me some time. And from here, I can also choose where and what privacy settings I want. If I want everyone to see it, just my friends, or if I want to keep that private. And I can also enable the option for users to comment, duet, and stitch. From here, I can press export. And now we've taken our idea all the way to upload. I hope you enjoyed this session and I hope you have an amazing Adobe Max. Thank you so much for joining and take care.